So we started our fantasy landscape project with a sketch, finding reference, putting it in, rough cutting it out and placing it. And now today we've been working on trying to get the cleanest elements and transitions possible. You can see my borders for my image there. You can see that I'm relying a lot on foreground elements just kind of covering up what's behind it. There are some additional things I could add in that would be nice. but it becomes about what do you have time to do well. And so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my lasso with my one pixel feather, maybe make it a three pixel feather because I want this to be a softer transition. And I'm just gonna do a loose cutout of this final foreground element. So I like a lot of the things in it, a lot of the color. but I don't have time to do the really clean cutout just to meet today's deadline, right? <laughs> and today's deadline is by midnight tonight, but within our class time here, I want to get something posted with a reasonable amount of effort. And every time you practice something, whether it's by deadline or not, you're building your skills and you're making it easier for the next time you want to do that thing. Now that I've done that, I can go in with my soft eraser and I can transition it a little bit better. I get rid of the hard edges. And this is just trying to show you that you don't let perfection be the enemy of a good, a good idea, a good project. You keep kind of pushing forward where you can. And all of it with more time can be perfected later. Now what can definitely help is identifying some of the major focal points and making sure there's no just obvious edges that are really a problem. So like these dark edges on the rock, I'm going to sharpen up my eraser, clean those up. And then remember how useful direct adjustments can be. Around the little flower here. So the way I'm 
forcing myself to go faster is by not letting myself zoom in. Even though there's a, a lot I know I'm missing because I'm not. But it also will get you a little bit more confident with the tools. So I'm using a, a tablet here and just with more and more practice, it's just easier for me to get the result I want with it. Where is that blue coming from? Another way to internally composite is with the clone stamp. So I'm just going to steal here quickly. Just fill in this little gap. We'll be learning a lot more about this with our next assignment. It's a way you can kind of use content aware in a targeted ma manner across your image. And that gives me enough overlap that then I can take the layer in front of it. and soften that edge. A little bit. All right. Well, so all of that looks fairly good. Some of the, the weird things that don't look believable are actually in the photo itself. So hard edges do exist sometimes in nature. Strange transitions. I got this weird blue back here. I'm not sure what that's from. So I can use my auto select layer, click on it. Oh, it goes all the way back to, oh, no, not that. And click through. There it is. So I can get rid of that blue. Help it transition. Yeah, I think that helps. Okay, now to finish it off, at least for now, because we can always return and improve, I'm going to crop my image. So I save it. Then I use the crop tool with all the options clear. And I move it in to crop into my finished image. And hit return. And then I can hit command semicolon to turn my guides off if I was using guides. I can command semicolon will turn guides on and off. And notice I just cropped it short on the right side. So I'm going to go in and use the crop tool again, zoomed in, make sure I get to my guides. This is where snapping two guides is actually helpful. So let me turn that on so I had it turned off. just to make sure I don't have any weird things at my edges. Move this in just a tiny bit. Hit return, it will crop. Command semicolon, check the edges. Looks good, looks like a photo I took while on vacation to a fantasy planet. All right. And are there little things I still can fix? Yes, the shadow around the rock. I never even did the, the direct adjustments to the extreme foreground, which I probably should do. I can do it really quick. Levels. Brighten it maybe a little bit. Color balance, take out some of that yellow, but not too much.
adjustments in hue saturation. Let's desaturate it a bit. Okay, thank you. All right, and now I can save my work as a PSD file, Command S. And then I'm going to save it as a copy, save a copy, and as a JPEG. So I go down to Format, change where it says Photoshop to JPEG. It will automatically change the tag. And then that is what I want to upload to Canvas as my best, best finished assignment right now. And that's what I will be, that's due by midnight tonight, and what I will score in the next couple days and give you comments on. Remember, you can get zero on assignments for turning nothing in by deadline, which means you don't get to turn them in again for better points. But if you turn in anything, even just your sketch or your inspiration by deadline, then you'll get one point at least. And you'll get to um, resubmit by the end of the semester for a new score. Because we just. So my final project thus far. I'm going to find it. It's off of my desktop. Mine is in my digital art folder in assignment one, and it is that one. And there's my PSD. Now, when I upload it, just so it's a little bit easier to see on the screen when we do our presentation critiques, I'm just going to shrink it a little bit here. So it's not too huge. Okay, and then those are the steps. You can see what a difference doing the direct adjustments, the color changes, and then ultimately, you know, the refined cutouts did to improve it. It might be nice to go back in when I have time and add in this extra layer of little bushes. And that will do it for the first assignment.